back. Not everyone's journey to motherhood is easy, and our next guest knows all too well how long and heartbreaking it can be. Tara Schwartz has spent almost two decades sharing the stories of others as an award-winning journalist, reporter, and anchor. And now, for the first time, she's telling her own in her heart-wrenching memoir, Can't Help Falling, A Long Road to Motherhood. And today she joins us in studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. What a pleasure. We're Great so to have you here. Yeah, we're so delighted to have you here. Thank but you. let's start at the beginning of your okay. journey to parenthood. Yeah. Uh, when, you, when did you decide that you wanted to adopt? I think we always wanted to have a child and adopt a child. And when, when we were struggling through all those years of infertility, miscarriage after miscarriage, failed IVFs, I think we decided at that time, let's let's turn the course and see what we can do in terms of adopting a child sooner rather than later. But I never imagined how long it was going to be and how hard it was going to be. So you describe the adoption process as, quote, endless and infuriating. <laughs> yeah. So what were some of those initial challenges that you faced? I think that it's it's really important that children are placed in loving and safe homes, and I understand that. But the waiting is excruciating. Because the whole the whole time you're you're looking to adopt a child, there's no baby. Mm -hmm. There's just this sort of this intangible idea of a baby that might come one day down the road. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a lot of waiting. And the waiting is hard. And when you're struggling with infertility, people tend to throw out a lot of platitudes, you know, like, oh, you'll try again, or you know, just relax mm -hmm. while the process runs its course. But I could never relax, and I always felt like I was waiting. It impacts all aspects of your life. You just mm -hmm always feel like you're waiting, mm -hmm. and it's really, really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, so two years after signing your adoption papers, you got the call that you were longing for. A baby boy was available and was offered to you. Uh, take us back to that time and what was going through your head. So here's the thing. I got the call two years later that you've reached the top of the list. Mm -hmm. And then it took another three years before <gasps> we got offered like, here's a baby now. Like, here's the baby. So we were like, oh my gosh, so we got the photograph and I would like carry it in my purse and I would take it out like dozens of times a day just looking at it because I felt like I had been through so many losses, like loss after loss. And I think if, if you haven't suffered a miscarriage, like you just can't understand how heartbreaking it is to want a child and not be able to have one. Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really heartbreaking. And so I would take that. I felt like a balloon was blown up, and all of a sudden I had, like, instead of sadness and loss, I had joy. I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be our baby. So it was it was wonderful. It was You're wonderful. pouring all your hopes into this yeah, Into this photo, photo. exactly. Yes. Into that photo, yeah. Uh, sadly, though, uh, you were that close to yeah. finalizing the adoption, yeah. and then... Um, all your dreams were shattered yeah. yet again yeah. because it turns out um, the mother of the child changed her mind. For only the second time in the history of Quebec's 45-year-long relationship with, with Quebec, the, we were number two, the birth mother changed her mind right at the weeks away from finalizing the adoption. And it was, oh my uh, gosh. It was crushing. It was so, crushing. Okay, so your hopes are dashed yep. again. Like, can you even start to even begin to find hope again? Or where do you find hope in that moment? Here's what I think I learned about loss. That, you know that expression, the only way out is through? Yeah. That's how I felt at the time. I felt utterly crushed, and I, I had experienced loss, grief, and I knew that I was going to be able to get to the other side of it. I just couldn't see it yet. Yeah. So I battened down the hatches. I closed the doors. I closed the windows. I curled up in my bed, and I waited out the pain. Like, that's, that's what I did, you know, because it was hard. Mm. So um, the, the first baby was, uh, uh, was from South Korea, Second and then a too. week later, another baby was yeah. offered to you from the same yeah. adoption center in South Korea. Yeah. What was your initial response? No. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Uh -uh. Not doing that. Yeah, no. Um, impossible. Can't go there. We're too fragile. And then it was like, maybe, possibly, mm, yes, 100%. Like, I just was looking at his picture, and he was, like, looking right at us and I thought oh my gosh this is our baby like this is our baby so and that all happened in two hours in a period of two hours it went from absolutely not to 100% yes hmm. so we launched on the process again but we were much more cautious yeah like it wasn't like we've got our baby it was like we're going carefully this time because we knew that something could go wrong we, we knew and so though then you at some point <laughs> shortly thereafter, travel 10,000 kilometers to South Korea to meet your son, mm -hmm. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Can you share what that moment was like? So we met him three times over the very short you know, moments. And then my husband had to leave to go back to Montreal. We went before a judge and then I took custody of him about a month later. And that is when the most extraordinary moments of my life happened. Because I tell you, he was with a family that he thought were his family. And then I closed the door of the hotel room and he started weeping, mm. sobbing, and did not stop for two full days. Oh. It was, he was, he was mourning this family that he had. He didn't understand what was going on. And I was the only person there to help him bear that weight. And watching him process his pain was like, it was like watching a miracle before your eyes. Like it was, it just, it, it still gets me. It was, it was really extraordinary. And after like four days, he would like touch my face and, oh. like, and like explore my face with his eyes and then hold my hand tightly as he fell asleep and curled into my arms when he woke up. And it was, it was like we were planting these little seeds of love that, you know, have grown into this massive oak tree. It was, it was exceptional. Like it was an incredible experience. Wow. So sounds good. Wow. Oh, I think we're gonna jump ahead. Yeah, um, you know, so I want to fast forward because there's a lot that happens, yeah. you know, that's very slow and then there's a lot that yeah. happens. So Sam was 18 months yep. uh, when he was granted a visa. You brought him uh, to Canada. So take us back to that moment of now arriving here. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful moment. You know, he's got like a whole bunch of, of new experiences. And that's when I started writing the book because I felt like mm. I had so much to say. And I feel like women who struggle with infertility uh, they have very, they have very few voices, and I felt like I wanted to be a voice for all of the women who have gone through it, who have suffered, who would, who have toiled to get to parenthood, because mm. it's really, really difficult, and we don't talk about it enough. And there are so many women, so I thought maybe my story would help others find the hope that they needed to keep on going. Mm. So you continued to do your job as a reporter yeah. and a, a news anchor for CTV, yeah. covering heavy, uh, sometimes extraordinarily yeah. tragic stories. Um, you spoke to, to you know parents grieving the loss of their children. How did you manage to continue your job? Uh, you know when you had yeah. you were suffering through your own heartbreak uh, behind closed doors. I think that that's one of the interesting parts of my book because I weave those stories in. So from the beginning to the end, I include the stories of other people, people I've covered, real people, and I think that I, I learned a lot of gr about grief from them because I was feeling it and they were feeling it. And even though we didn't discuss it, I felt there was this kinship. And I think that people often say, oh, you know, have you gotten over your grief? And I always say, I never will because I really believe grief changes you and you can't get over something that you are. Like it is who I am now, mm. but I think it scars you. But at the same time, I say in my book, I don't, I'm not afraid of those scars because they're not all I see anymore. So I want other people to feel that way too, that it can, you can grow into something, you know, that, that will accept. Acceptance is, is so important. And I think to continue that, you say that you wanted to be a voice for women who have mm -hmm. gone through this. And so, so many women I know yeah. have reached out to you looking for advice and yeah. hope and, you know, understanding. What advice do you give these women? To, to be able to say, it's okay to say I'm not okay. Like, talk about it. Because infertility is a stigma. And like any stigma, people are uncomfortable around it, so they choose just to pretend it doesn't exist. Yes. Let's just not do anything about it. So I want to be a part of cracking open that conversation to sort of say, no, it's okay to say, I'm not okay. This hurts. It's hard. And for the people who love those people, not to pretend it doesn't exist, to acknowledge the pain. Just acknowledging someone's pain can go such a long way to say, how can I be here for you? acknowledge it because that's the way we can forge a more understanding and compassionate way forward. That's how we do it. Tara, thank you so much for sharing your emotional thank story you. with us and with Canada. Thank, thank you. Thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you. The book is called Can't Help Falling a Long Road to Motherhood. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. So good. So great. Thank you. So